Well, hi folks, hope you're well. Um, it's Saturday the 14th of Jan. Uh, I've really um, been dreading doing this video, quite frankly, because this is an absolute minefield um, for various reasons. One is that you can get terribly, terribly bogged down in the science of it all, number one. Number two is there's a hell of a lot that you have to undo because the subject of uh, tonight's video before you turn off in utter disgust and oh not another one is the fact is that we live on a flat earth a plane not a planet okay a plane a flat sheet okay and um, <clears throat> so it's a tough call because we have all been, of course, been brought up with this. And the other one that I've been dreading is that I, I am not going to get into a debate about this um, with those with an opposing view. This is not the purpose of the video. You can hold any view you like, my old son, as they say. I am simply putting forward my beliefs for your delectation. They're not coming forward to you seeking your approval, your endorsement, same thing, your ridicule, your scientific arguments. I don't care about what books you've read. I don't care how many letters after your bloody name you have. We all have them. I don't care because I stopped caring what other people think about me a long time ago because I find it a restrictive practice in my development. You see, the freedom that you enjoy, the moment you don't give a shit what other people think about you folks, it's, it's a revelation. It truly is. It's a breath of fresh air. You've broken the chains that bind you. What will my mum say? What will my brother say? What will my dad say? What will my friends and colleagues say? These oh so important are they? Fuck. People. Look folks. To thine own self be true. Because ultimately... When you drop dead, it's only going to be you. And you'll meet your maker soon enough. Nobody, quite frankly, gives a shit. Into the whole ego is the Holy Spirit. The Father, the Son, the Holy Gauze, into the Holy Gauze. Nobody really truly gives a shit what you think, quite frankly, my dear. And nobody truly gives a shit what I think. But it's nice to share. Maybe, just maybe, you think along the same lines as me. In which case, you know, great. At least this idiot isn't alone. Because misery loves company. But so does enlightened people. Enlightened people, you'll find, are happier people. There's none so dumb as the ignorant and none so bloody miserable, is there? You see, it strikes me, certainly before I digress too much, that the unhappy people are the ones who are less informed about life. But that doesn't make bright people any happier, strangely enough, does it, that thought? The problem is they're believing the wrong things. And those that seek to make them believe that are laughing all the way to the bloody bank. Because they've got you, my friend. They truly have ensnared you in their net or their spider's web. Because they want you there. You're drowning, my dears, in a sea of ignorance. <coughs> Before I launch into my diatribe, of 
the flat earth, I would like to make a few points. Number one is, I'm going to keep do a kiss on you, K-I-S-S. I'm going to keep it simple, stupid. It's the only way I can cope. I'm a simple soul. Okay. Yes, fundamentally, I'm a scientist. Aren't we all? I have an ology. Don't we all? But before I launch, I think there's certain things that if you're going to um, avail yourself to some of the truths that you might be resistant, assuming you're a baller, of you believe that we live on a sphere, don't worry. I'm not here to convince you. I'm here to say and tell you what convinced me to the polar opposite, excuse the pun, of what you believe. If you believe we're on a ball and I believe we're on a flat plane, we might have something to talk about. But sadly, this isn't a two-way conversation. I'm going to tell you why I think like I do. And maybe, just maybe, it'll spur you into thinking, well, there's a certain degree of he's got nothing to gain by telling me this. That's very true. I don't have a vested interest in anything. You do. I don't have a club. I don't have a membership. I don't have nothing. I'm just sharing information. I've got my information from others like Eric Dubai and co who share, share, share. And I've listened to them and I've looked at the preponderance of evidence and I've done my own due diligence, believe it or not. I've looked into things myself. Yes, I'm really not that stupid to take the word of a person. But the preponderance of evidence, once you discover it, it's like opening... A magic Pandora's box. And that's what it is. Once you get your head, dare I say it, around the fact is that we live on a flat plane, so much that has been confusing you or I, certainly with me, it makes perfect sense. All of a sudden, it's a revelation, as I said. You see, it's like discovering the Ark of the Covenant. What is this big thing? Well, I believe it's the truth. And I want to be set free. And I heard rumours that the truth will indeed set me free. Well, it has. I'll tell you why. It's given me great hope for the future of humanity. Because... Believe it or not, in Shakespeare's words, the truth will out. And the one thing the internet has allowed us to do is share information and solve the deeper mysteries of the lies and do our own due diligence with such power never available to those who seek knowledge have had before in history. You have more power in your mobile phone than the President for the United States had at his fingertips in 1976. In your pathetic little mobiles. There is no need for universities anymore because we've got Google. There's no need and no excuse now for you to remain ignorant and you won't have a university bill. Ho, ho, ho. Before you even attempt to get your head around what it is I'm saying, although it's going to be childlike at its level, I need to keep it at that level for my mentality, okay? If you want to be churlish about it. But I like things simple. You see, in Occam's theory, there's a thing called Occam's razor. And what it means is that if there's so much evidence that you have to choose from to explain a situation or an event 
or a murder or a, a crime or a state of this planet and you have all these snippets of information the evidence which you will collate and sift through to come to a conclusion a decision it is often the most simple that makes sense as well and it is usually that that is the right one to choose under Occam's razor it's a well-known principle looking at the preponderance of evidence is often the most simple solution of those available that is the most effective and probably explains a hell of a lot more than the others the others are just stocking fillers. Do you get me? So let's look at this. You need to understand this. Before you can be serious about considering whether we live on a flat plane and not a ball. I say a ball, a sphere, if you like, if you want to be picky. And there are picky people. Understand that there is no space travel with the known technology to the general public. That's an important fact. What we perceive as available technology to our knowledge, our knowledge, not mankind's, ours, the general public's knowledge, there is no space travel. It's a scam. It's one big fuck off vacuum above the firmament. Number two, get a reality check and do your own due diligence on the fact is there will never and has never been satellites floating around our heads. Because if you were to believe the current shit about satellites going round and round the garden like a teddy bear, way up in space, which was an Arthur C. Clarke invention, another elite Illuminati type, scientist on the payroll. It was a dream of his, and that's all it was. And a dream that turned into a perfect scam of a way of convincing the people to part with cash for satellite communication and mobile phone technology and telecommunications. Satellites do not exist. Yeah, but I see them. No, you don't see them go over, you dick. Okay, there are no satellites. If you were believing there are satellites, and you think there is an excess of 130,000 of them up there, which by common calculation is probably conservative, going round and round the garden above our heads. How come none have ever fallen on us? How come they don't collide with one another? How come they don't go wrong? How come? How come... In 1954, there were satellite dishes, if you like, look like satellite dishes, on the ground, pointing around the earth and up to the sky. There you go, so definitely satellites then. What were they shooting at? They weren't shooting the information at satellites. They were shooting it and bouncing it off the ionosphere. That's the ozone layer. Ozone, within 30 seconds of exposure to ultraviolet light, is ionised within 30 seconds. So we might have an ozone layer, but it lasts for about 30 seconds before it becomes ionised. And that is the ionosphere. And it is that that the dishes are pointing at. Not satellites. There are no satellites, folks. It's a lie. A nice one, a lucrative one, but it's a lie. Ham radio people have been bouncing off, and TV and the others, have been bouncing off the ionosphere 
big years. Even Tesla was doing it. Anyway, except there are no satellites. That's number two. Number three, <clears throat> except that there are no such things as planets that you can land an aeroplane or a spaceship on. There are none. There are stars. There are gaseous balls. And there were wandering stars. And the wandering stars, those without a home on our firmament, are the planets. What we perceive as planets. But in no way... Can you land anything on them? And we can't take photographs of them. Not with standard photography. And those pictures of all the different planets, Jupiter, Mars, Pluto, Venus, Saturn, blah de blah de blah for the most part are computer generated images. Pretty pictures, just like that NASA do of the Earth. Yes. Understand that and accept it. Don't even think about in investigating the flat earth until you've got your head around what I'm saying here. No space travel with known technology. No satellites floating around our heads. No planets, just gas balls wandering about. Here's another one. The moon and sun are within our firmament, which is a like a centre park's dome above our earth, our plane, our circular plane. We're in a centre parks, and within the centre parks, folks, is the sun and the moon going round and round the garden like a teddy bear. Except that the sun is not 93 million miles away. Stars are not light years away. And the moon's not that far away. The moon is the last latest addition. The sun was here before the moon. OK, understand that. The, the moon... The moon was put in late for a very good reason. It's a suppressor. It's a repeater station. That's all. Understand that. And it is within our firmament. It is no more than three and a half thousand miles high. And nor is the sun. And here's the biggie. This is a real tough one for you to get your head around, I suppose. I know, I know they wouldn't, but they do. NASA lie. NASA stands for never a straight answer. NASA. Now, we could get technical, I could give a slide rule out. We can talk till the cows come home about you've got all the evidence. But ask yourself who wrote the fucking textbooks. Ask yourself the moment you went into school, the first thing that was shoved into your hand, children, was a globe. Every poster on the bloody school that I went to, the first school, five years old, straight out the crying arms of my mother and mine. On the wall was pictures of the planets and pictures of the earth. And bloody globes everywhere. At five years old. It begs the question. If indeed we are on a flat plane. And I believe we are. Who gains by the deception? Who out there would lie well the amazing thing in the early days of course it was never considered that we lived on anything but a flat plane it was no big deal all the navy 
uh, sorry, shipping maps don't take into account the curvature of the world. They're flat. Okay, of like aeronautical maps don't take into the account or nature of the curvature of the world. Navigation maps, they don't. The new standard map of the world doesn't take into account a curvature. Those engineers who are building the G2 railway state road track, I know a couple, I live near one of them. Don't people who lay railway tracks don't need to compensate for the curvature up or down of the curvature of the world. A ship doesn't have to put extra fuel in to compensate for the extra distance due to the curvature. It plots a point between two points and it's a straight line and they calculate their fuel requirements and so do aircraft. Pilots don't sit there pushing continuously forward on the stick to fly in harmony with the curvature of the earth. I know because I'm a pilot. Not to mention the Coriolis effect which you can wax lyrical about. How come the polar star is dead still? And all the other stars go round and round and round and they have done and this Leo star sign rotates like a clock around the polar star. So NASA and the black nobility who run this world have a lot to gain from keeping us in the dark. Religion. Well, of course, it was the bloody uh, free, uh, not only the Freemasons, it was the Jesuits and the Catholic Church that put Copernicus under great pressure to change what he knew to be true. The fact is that we live on a flat plane and suddenly start talking about us being heliocentric. Copernicus was very straight and very adamant, a great scientist and philosopher and all the other bits. He was dead set. Everybody accepted we lived on the flat earth. And suddenly the Catholic Church had something to say about it, including the Jesuits, of course. And under great pressure and duress, he changed his mind. He must have been seriously threatened. So religion had evidently something to gain. Talk about brainwashing. Technological frustration. You see, folks, we do live on a flat plane. Uh, but they have such technology, those that seek to keep it from us. They don't want to share. It's been known about from the ancient, ancient history that is suppressed. That we live on a flat plane. I'll try and show you what my belief is here. This is a little key ring. And you can see that we have our land mass and our oceans. And around such landmass, you can see a white ring. That is the Antarctic Ice Circle. There is no Antarctica that you believe to be seen. You just think it's somewhere you go if you go south. That's what you hit. Folks, you can see also the moon and the sun. If I put a little light on, it might go nuts here but can you see and the sun and the moon rotate 
round and round and round. And as they go round, it gets dark, it gets light, it gets dark, it gets light. And the sun is rotating or catching up with the moon because it travels a little bit faster. Twice, three times a year, it catches it up and overtakes it. Do you know what happens three times a year? Yes, you've guessed it. An eclipse. You see, your perception is when you see a sunrise, you think it's rising round the corner. No, it ain't. It's just coming into your view because we all have a blind spot and the sun suddenly appears. It's your perspective. It's your perspective. And it's coming towards you. And as things come towards you, folks, it looks like it's going to go over your head, of course. It's rising. And it has gone past. And when you look behind it, it's setting. It's not setting. It's just going out of your view. But if you were to be stupid enough to zoom in to a sun that's going setting, you could zoom it back up by zooming it towards you. If you have a ship on the horizon, it looks like it's disappearing around the corner. But you get a Nikon P900 and you zoom in, the ship will come into full view again, even though it's 35, 50, 60 miles away. Well, if there was a curvature, there would be no ship to zoom in on because you'd have nothing to focus on. People say, yeah, but we, we've gone around the world. We've circumnavigated the world, didn't we? Duh. Yeah. People have gone round and round the garden that way. West to eastern. East to west. Nobody has gone north to south. Circumnavigation. I wonder why. Nobody's gone that way round they've just gone that way round or that way round it took a guy three and a half years to go around in the early days in his sailing ship and he never got past that ice ring you know that one round here the one that is heavily guarded because outside this ring if i had to extend it to make it bigger and bigger and bigger there are other continents that you and me aren't allowed near. There are nation after nation state after nation state drilling for oil, drilling for gold, mining coal, mining rare earth minerals. There is a huge industry on the land masses outside the Antarctic ice circle. You don't see this advertised, of course you don't, because it's a... It's basically every country is for itself. Nobody has rights. Russia have got huge interests. China are there. Japan are there. Britain are there. America are there. They're all got their interests. They're drilling for oil. They're drilling for gold. There's copious amounts of gold and rare earth minerals. All we get out of Admiral Byrd is there's lots of coal. Well, dig a little admiral bird and you'll find there's lots of oil under the extra continents that are laying around and the complete... You think the earth stops here? It goes out and out and out. It's Nobody truly knows how wide it is and what does it matter. I'm only interested in little old me living on a flat plane because I know I ain't going to go over this ice ring because I'm not allowed why who gives them the right to stop me if I wish as a human being a free person I want to go over here to this land continent that the Chinese have known about since the 6th century 
there'd be maps discovered to show you there's more land outside of our known land masses here then we we got nothing this is nothing compared to the land that's around us but we're not allowed out we're caged animals folks and we're encased by a large glass dome called a firmament that's what we are who else gains by the deception well we know industry does of course big money just explain that it's not a fuck fest folks this is a land grab and germany were first there with neue schwabenland and under them land masses folks there is such advanced technology that has been dug up and been frozen in time and there probably is alien technology that they're using and keeping for themselves of course the satanists gain and we know who they are so having said that then i am more convinced than ever that we live on a flat plane you can wax lyrical about the Bedford Canal, the experiment where there's six miles, two men with a theodolite looking at one another, no curvature on six miles. The Suez Canal, 60 miles long, I think, no curvature. You can zoom into a ship that looks like it's going over the edge and you can zoom it back into full view, no curvature. You see, and we're not traveling around, around, around at 1,600 miles an hour or whatever they say it is. I don't even bother looking at the bloody numbers now. What's the point? The satellite myth, you see, that's great. It's a great money spinner, this satellite business. Do you know why? Because your mobile phone and our telephone and our television our satellite sat and our sat nav systems they wouldn't work without satellites yes they would they have to because there's no satellites it's called pass the parcel all over our land if you can bother to open your bloody eyes there are aerials repeated stations aerials 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 every bloody way you look and when you go out of town, there's not that many aerials. You suddenly don't get a very good mobile phone signal, do you? But if the satellite is way up there, you should have a continuously brilliant signal. You don't know, do you? You see, it's past the parcel. You send a signal out, it hits the nearest state aerial to you that's tuned into your frequency. And that sends it to its mate, who sends it to its mate, who sends it to a central collection point, a hub. And that hub sends it down fibre optic cable, maybe, if you're phoning abroad, under the sea. And they've been laid since 1956, miles upon miles upon miles, like a network, a spider's network under our oceans. And they're that thick. And one tiny hair like fiber can carry thousands of conversations how do you think a company or oh, sorry a country like japan or china can just switch off the internet if they wished to stop their viewers looking at stuff we can look at oh it's very simple they turn the fucking repeater station off there's nothing to talk to. They go la la. They go deaf. And they can switch it back on. Folks, whenever NASA send pictures, NASA, never a straight answer, of our alleged space out there with the ISS, and outer space, the moon landings, where are all the satellites? There were no satellites.
thoughts. Get it in your head. Your sat-nav works by repeater stations. Your motorway network speed cameras work by repeater stations. Everything works by radio and bouncing off and using our dome, remember the centre parks, or our ionosphere to bounce. Nobody has managed to break through the firmament to get a rocket up there, number one. Number two is if the rocket technology got through the firmament because space is allegedly a vacuum, there's nothing for the rocket to push against. So how can it propel itself forward? The best case scenario in a vacuum, it would spin around like a twat and kill the occupants. And then we have the Van Allen belt. Let's not even discuss the Van Allen belt. There's no space travel. Understand that. It's a method that NASA have used to cream off money off the idiots to pay for deep underground military bases. There is a parallel civilization underground equally as large as America, underneath America. And it ain't for you and it ain't for me. It's got high speed, high speed travel. It's got such technology. They keep it for themselves. We are here at their bidding to serve them. It is them who want to keep it suppressed. It is them who are feeding us full of shit about the occasional picture of Mars. For Christ's sake, we can't get stuff right on this planet. How <laughs> we can't take a proper photograph of the earth yet they send back pictures from millions and millions and millions and millions of miles away from fucking mars are you having a laugh <laughs> it's a bit like the cobbler's children have no shoes don't you think of course we live on a flat fucking earth finally you want to know why the tides are not affected by the bloody moon? Another scam and a lie. Because our seas are all connected. And they, if you look in the Bible, and I ain't a religious freak, you don't need to be. There is in the deep oceans of our world, a layer of super saline. And twice a day that rises and sinks. Super saline and normal saline won't mix. So as the super saline comes up, like you're breathing, the tides come in. As the saline comes down, the tides go out. Simples. But it's, no, it's not. It's the moon. That is, it's the moon, you moron. Well, listen then. If it's the moon that affects the tides, why doesn't the tides make the non-salt water lakes of our world have tides? You see, I go fly fishing at Grafham Waters in Cambridge, which is pretty big. And I don't have to worry about the water rising and falling twice a day because it's the moon's coming around and it's the tides coming in and the tides going out. But even the huge lakes of our world, the freshwater lakes of our world, don't raise a bloody millimetre when the tides are coming in and out. How come the moon doesn't affect them? It's nothing to do with the bloody moon, the tides. If you want to know the truth, the sun probably has a little effect on it, but not the moon. The sun is no more than 3,500 miles high, and nor is the bloody moon. The moon is a disk. It is a flat disk. 
It is not a bloody ball. But I just want to look at the flat earth. I'm still trying to get my head around it, folks. I'm still learning. I'm still listening to Eric Debay. I'm still looking at the preponderance of evidence. But I'm convinced more than ever now. I don't... I, I, I am not embarrassed now. I've got past that point. I've come out, if you know what I mean. I've come out. It's about... I'm gay. I'm not gay. But I've come out. I'm a flat earther. I'm proud of it. Absolutely. Because I ain't no sheep. And I ain't no dickhead. And if you want to carry on being a baller, you be a baller. It is not my business to convince you of otherwise because you're perhaps not ready yet for the shock that you've been lied to by the governments of the world. And it's been international deceit. Maybe you're a little... You're not cooked yet. Do you know what I mean? Come on, folks. Get real. The stars aren't light years away. I can video stars with my Nikon P900. They look fucking close to me. And if they were trillions and trillions of light years away, I wouldn't be able to see Dick. But I can spot them. And I can look at different colours and they're little dancing mazes for me. They're little magic little things. And every one of them is unique. Don't give me the northern light shit. Don't give me the southern hemisphere, northern hemisphere. There's no hemispheres for Christ's sake. We're on a flat plane. Hemisphere is half a sphere. We're not on a sphere. We're on a flat plane. Get it into your head. Nothing you say will convince me otherwise. Over to you to do your own due diligence. For me, I'm going to go look at my new standard map of the world and marvel at how it is that they've pulled it off on the world's population so beautifully to treat us like fucking morons. Not me.